What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Creed Podcast. I'm about to interview John Matei, author of Brave for Freedom. And um, so we, we grew up together, uh, well, kind of, yes, we in, 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 in high school. Right. We, we met. It was freshman year, 09. 09, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> what do you remember about that? Exactly. Well, like, how, how, from your perspective, how did we meet? Okay, so I was at the Valley Vista High School Library. I was on the computer. I turned to my right. I see you at a table talking to someone across from you. And you had a Bible. You were talking to someone about the Word of God. So I came to you. And what I said was, hey, I'm a Christian too. And then you looked at me, looked up and down, and then rolled your eyes, and then turned away. Continued, you... Yes. You continued talking to the person in front of you, and I just walked away. <laughs> that's, that's how everything just sparked. That's what happened. I rolled my eyes at you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you, you looked up and down. You're like, who's this kid? And then, what the heck? <laughs> that, that's what happened. See, see but... <laughs> that's what happened. Bro, bro. See, back in that time, I was like a brand new Christian. And you know how you get like legalistic and stuff. Right. You know, like, like you, you're all into your ego. You know, you learned a couple Bible verses and. Now you're going to preach. That's how I was back then. I didn't know what I was right. doing. I just thought that that's what, that's what you were supposed to do. That's cr- I, You know right. what? I apologize. That's okay. For rolling my eyes at you. <laughs> that is hilarious, man. Well, anyways, so you are, you are an author now. Yes, published. Published author. Let's make that clear. <laughs> and you could... People can buy your books online. And yes, stuff. online. I'm working on getting the books sold in the store, Barnes and Nobles, right now. Yeah. My publisher is communicating with uh, Barnes and Nobles. We're trying to get everything sorted out. Amazing. Worldwide man. Di- distribution. So it's going to be a big deal for me and for the publisher. So. Dude, that that'll be great, bro. That'll. All right. Um, all right. So I want to ask you some questions um, about. You it well 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 your life and I know you your book is about your father yes and I've talked to your father interviewed him and everything I want to ask you what was it that this is very important let me let me make this clear because there there's a purpose why John has written this book it's mm-hmm. and the reason why it's called Brave for Freedom because we live in a country right now where that has freedom in fact it's at risk the freedom that we have here in America is at risk most people don't know that. And that's what, that's why I was driven to write this book, because it's going to inspire people who take freedom for granted, that their minds will be changed and recalibrated to understand the freedom that we have here is at risk and that we should hold on to it. Right. So, what was it like, at what point did you realize you're going to write your father's life story like what when when did you decide to do that yeah so i was going with my brother-in-law kirk we went to cabela's you know if you take northern uh, restaurant east side it's like it's a place where they sell guns you oh buy oh yeah boats, i know cabela's. things yeah. like that that's where i got my gun yeah so i i went with my dad i went with <laughs> freedom my sister patty and uh kirk's father so we all went to cabela's and it was at that time when my dad was sharing his story with them. And I was looking at my dad as he was sharing his story. And I was amazed at how passionate he was about his story. And for the last several years, my dad always talks about his story all the time. He says, hey, we have freedom here in America. In Romania, we didn't have freedom. And I want you guys, he was talking to me. He was talking to my siblings, us kids. And he said, I want you guys to be successful here in America because I fought for my freedom. But I was in Capella, uh, um, Cabela's, and he was passionate about the story. So I was just, you know, on the sidelines listening as my dad was talking to my brother-in-law. And I was just sitting there and, and I said, okay, well, I wrote two books. And what if I write the third book about my dad? Because I'm not sure if anyone else is going to do it. Maybe so, but I don't know. So I thought, 
maybe I, maybe I should write this book. I don't know if it was God that told me. Maybe it was God. Who knows? Um, I'm, I think personally, I think it was God that told me to write this book. And so, you know, I was counting the cost. Remember, guys, if you want to do something big in life, you have to count the cost. So I, I took about maybe 10 minutes. You know, I was like washing my hands, you know, washing dishes in the kitchen. I was counting the cost. I was like, okay, so what's going to happen if I do write this book? Is it going to be hard? Is there going to be any obstacles? What's going to happen? So I counted the cost and I made sure that, that I'm going to finish this, this um, mission. And so I did, and uh, I was talking to my dad. I told my dad, hey, I want to write this book. So we spent three months collaborating and taking notes, and my dad was telling me his story. And so what I did, I, what I did was I took his entire story in order, and I wrote, it, I wrote it all down on Google Docs, everything, every single thing, the weather, the color of his shirt, what he felt, his thoughts. And what I did is I created a new Google Docs, which is the book. So I was writing my dad's book. But I just want America to know what my dad had to go through because my dad went through a lot. And um, I wouldn't say he was disrespected a lot, but he can sometimes be misunderstood. But he deserves a lot of credit. And so I decided to write this book because my dad, de my dad deserves a lot of credit. He deserves to be heard worldwide because this book in fact I'll show you right now and okay. this is your first time seeing this but okay this book is not just a Romanian book because I, I understand that Romania went through the communism with Ceausescu with Russia all that stuff you know but this book is a European book it's a worldwide book because the the Eastern Bloc was multiple you know uh, it was multiple countries that was affected by the by the uh, Russian regime so this book needs to be heard worldwide. So here, this is the book right here, Brave for Freedom. Okay. Amazing. Yeah, it's designed by the book. Um, I, there's a lot of history that I would need to learn. Uh, this looks amazing, bro. Right, yeah. It's 200 um, pages. I'm going to read this, mm -hmm. by the way. I'm going to go through this whole thing. That's amazing, bro. Right. Um... I was just being silly up top, but <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, so I I don't want to give away all the details right. of your father's <clears throat> life because obviously it's in it's going to be in the book. But um, can you tell your life story, like you? You know, okay. you, you grew up with this father. Mm -hmm. What were things that you learned in life? What are things that you've had to overcome? What are things that like, you know, your father coming from communism. Right. What kind of principles did he teach you in life? Okay, so, yeah, so he went through a lot. And because he went through a lot, I went through a lot. Even my sisters and my family, it was physical abuse, verbal abuse. It was uh, really bad. Yeah. And because of that, I had to learn how to forgive myself because of the damage that w was happening into my life. And I had to learn how to forgive my dad as well. But it was just uh, a long-term process of just healing and things like that. But my life story really is just me just being a simple kid, innocent. There's nothing to me, really. I'm just a quiet kid, really, that had some hurt inside of me. And I learned to, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to forgive myself and to forgive my dad and learn how to spend time with my sisters and my family. And uh, I believe that God gave me the the power to forgive my dad because with this forgiveness that I have towards my dad I was able to write a book about him otherwise I wouldn't have the the energy to do so and so yeah I'm just a simple kid and I want to give my dad some respect and credit that he deserves that's amazing right man. um I, I, I had to go through a similar situation like with my, my family like you know forgiveness and father mother or grandfather but um but you you're talking about you when you were younger like for, what i remember when i met you was uh i just remember you from when we were in pe 
Oh, really? <laughs> That's how I the remember Valley Vista you. High School? Yeah, because I didn't remember exactly how we met. I just remember you from when we were in PE. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think at that time, like, I, you know, I always had a lot of people try to mess with me because at that time I was, like, super, super skinny. And then, um, and then like, I was always, like, carrying a Bible around. So, you know, yeah. people always want to jab at the guy who, right. like, has some sort of a faith in something <laughs> and then also I was like super scrawny so like people were bold enough to kind of kind of mess with me but like uh from what I remember you is at that time I was running around doing magic tricks right do you remember that yeah actually I do you were at the library and you were doing magic tricks I remember <laughs> it was at the table <laughs> and I remember I think it was his name Oscar you remember Oscar he was a big dude I don't even remember. There's so many people. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so he was there too, but you were doing magic tricks. Again, you were kind of uh, pushing me aside at the, again the second time. I was doing magic tricks. Well, no, you were. But <laughs> I wasn't really competent, so I wasn't sure what, what was happening. And people around me thought that I was uncompetent, and they were just rolling my eyes, looking at me up and down like you did the first time. <laughs> and, I was being silly. Oh my god! Oh, you were, <laughs> wait. Yeah. Were, were you like you were pretty sarcastic, weren't you? Yeah, I was. I was really sarcastic, really silly. I was joking all the time. I remember <laughs> that? I remember that, right. <laughs> dude. That was probably why I was always annoyed. Because <laughs> like I didn't like when people were sarcastic all the time. I, I, I'm sarcastic all the time now. I'm sarcastic all the time. I am too, all the time. In fact, yeah. there's some people that don't know whether I'm joking or not. <laughs> yeah. You see what I mean? I got the same thing. <laughs> like my friend, my She's friend Kelly. I, I, I don't know if my friend Kelly's gonna watch this, but he told me to. We did the Edge program together. Right, right. And yeah. He, he said, John, I can't tell if you're joking or not. What are you doing? What are you saying? Yeah, I learned that. <laughs> I learned sarcasm from my friend Miles, who we're gonna get him interviewed. Right. On here when he's but he was. Pr- he has his doctorate degree. I'm surprised. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he 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 he. he he was probably the most sarcastic person I've, I've ever met in my life. Right. And me knowing him, like, he made me become a sarcastic person. And mm-hmm. he used to not like it when I would be sarcastic because, you know, you can't tell when someone's kidding or not. But right. then now now all my friends are sarcastic also. But, uh, but anyway, so so um, you and I, we, we've gone to, like, a lot of churches together. We did. We've gone to. With Nathan Morris. Nathan Moore's evangelist. The three-day period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember it was in, uh, it was in high school with that one teacher. He was an atheist. Remember that? Oh yeah, we always get into debates. Debate what, with that teacher. What was his name? But he had a whiteboard in his class, and he had everything prepped. I don't know what it was. Math. It was a math class. It was math connections. Yeah. But I would go up to the class before the class starts and write God. <laughs> so, you know, God is good or Christianity, oh, stuff yeah, like I that. I'll, that. I'll write something about God, how God created the universe. Something to trigger the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? And yeah. then and the class would start and then he would just come up to the board and race it, everything that we wrote, and then begin the, the session. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you remember when I would like always have a debate with him? Yeah. We always I like did. S- talk about science and philosophy. I did. And, yeah. Yeah, we did. Like we would he was trying to prove to me God doesn't exist. I was trying to prove to him. He was twisting everything. Through science right. and everything. In fact, uh, I told him that the reason why the universe is called the universe is because God created the universe with one verse. You, you see what I mean? <laughs> but then he said, no, scientists created a new name for the universe. It's not called the universe anymore. It's called w- whatever it was. Right. So he he's always trying to cover the lie. Right, 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 right. That is hilarious, man. So, and he plays with action figures too. Remember that? It, oh my, he's he's dude. smart. He always twists everything so that way it's not <laughs> against him anymore. I told him. I said, I walked up to him. I and don't want to say his name. <laughs> he has like ten figures on the table before class starts. And I said, Hey, why are you playing with figures? You're a teacher. I remember and, that. And then he said, I'm not playing with them. They're playing with themselves. I was like, <laughs> He's always twisting out, it to I'm where out. like I I look dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, we got, we got a super sidetrack over there. Uh, <laughs> Okay, anyways, yeah. So That's hilarious. <laughs> um so I wanna know, like, how do you, how did you what, what what do you believe in exactly? Like what is it that you're 
Because I know a lot of people Christians. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people, people have their own way of believing many times. You know, a lot of right. denominations, a lot of de- types of churches, whatever. Like, what is your ideal world? Or what? Wh- how, how do you see, what do you believe in? What do you think needs to happen in the world? Like, what wh- what do you believe in, first off? Yeah, so I believe in the authority of the scripture, that the Bible is the only truth that mankind has. So the Bible has authority that no other book has. You see what I mean? And this book takes us into the unknown, into the unseen. It takes us to a God that lasts forever, that this body lasts uh it, la- it it just dies out, but the, the soul that's inside of us will last forever. So I, I believe in, you know, Jesus Christ. He came down to earth to die for our sins. And most people don't have proof that he even existed, things like that. But it's faith that activates your walk in the unknown. You see what I mean? How faith has power in the unknown. So the fact that you don't really know if God is, is real, things like that. But we have the authority of scripture, but faith that powers us through it. You know, Billy Graham said that he can't prove that God is real. He can't He can't prove any of that. But it's faith. You see what I mean? That makes and sense. I believe faith is a huge highlight in my life to where I just follow Jesus throughout my life. And I've seen his activity in my life. So it's something that really just grabs me. And it's something that I hold on to uh, dearly because I've seen the move of God in my life. So I wasn't intending to do this like, on the podcast, right. but I was wondering, like, because this is something I've been wanting to do, but I want to challenge people's, like, faith and their, what they believe in and mm-hmm. what they say, and, um, but not in a way to make you, like, stump over your words or, right. you know what I mean, but just more of, like, a, because you, you, you said, you had mentioned, Billy Graham said that I can't prove God, mm-hmm. but, you know, but that faith in God, so is there ever... It, has there ever been a time in your life where you, like, doubted what you actually believe in? Oh, absolutely. All the time. You know, we're, we're, we're humans. We, we doubt. It's it's just who we are. We doubt, you know. But um, it's just something that I, I have this foundation that what God did for me when I first met him, that he was actually active in, in, my, in my prayer. There's things that happen in uh, where there's confirmations that God was actually active in my life, things like that, where you can actually understand the things that God did. You see what I mean? It, it's not yeah. just me being born in a Christian family. That doesn't really, that, that, that's not really it. Oh, I got you. It's, a, it's you. a personal thing with Jesus where I actually have this uh, connection with him. You see? Right, right. Right. Um, so, I want to ask you, so, so how long have you been a Christian? For about almost 15 years at least. I was born in a Christian family, but with a personal relationship, uh, it's about 15. Like by the time you actually decided, like, all right, this is what I believe in. Yeah. For 15 years. That's when I actually had my prayer life and I was reading the Bible. Okay, okay. So, so my next question is, is like, what, what was it that you said that you started doubting? Like, what, like, can you remember a time in your life where you're like, okay, so you've been a Christian for about 15 years. Mm-hmm. At some point, you probably had a little bit of doubt or something. What can you remember a specific time or a moment where you kind of doubted God, or did you doubt His existence, or did you doubt? Well, what the, were you doubting? the problem was when I was looking at other religions around me. There's a lot of different religions out there that try to capture you, and they try to blend in, and it was it was that. But it's also the hard things that happened in my life. Any any trials, any uh, like for example, you know, my childhood was really bad. So the fact that I had that, I was wondering, you know, God, where, where were you? Or if, if you really are real, then like, how come you weren't there? Things like that. So it, it's just those things that shook me a little bit. Yeah, that's understandable. Right. Um, like, like, okay, now you don't got to get too personal. It's okay. <laughs> you don't got to get too personal. But I say, I ask these questions because there are a lot of people who watch me who... Right were previous Christians or previously believed in God. And, and I always say things like, you know, like I, I don't like to call myself a Christian. because mm-hmm. It's simply because of, like, the modern-day Christian today. Right. You know, like if somebody asks, like, hey, are you, are you a Christian? I always ask them, 
you could tell by the way they ask. Mm-hmm. You know, they're trying to. What's the word? They're crafty in their words. Like, are you a Christian? And I'm like, okay, what do you mean when you say Christian? Like, oh, you know, like you're like Bible thump. You, you know, you 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 judge people this that and the other. And it was, so when asked me that, I'm like, okay, if that if that's your definition, no, uh, that's not what I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's why I, oftentimes I don't call myself a Christian because a lot of people. But let me make it clear: I do believe in Yeshua. I do believe in Jesus Christ. But so I ask these questions because a lot of people struggle with what they believe in. And a lot right. of people, many times, Christianity is the largest religion in the world that's ever existed throughout history. And so at some point, majority of people have become a Christian at some point. And then they give it up. And so I'm trying to ask you, you know, what was the things that you doubted? That and then how did you come back or what made you stay? You know what I mean? Like why are you still right? So, so so Christians. Well, I wouldn't like you said Christians, but like <laughs> for for me, being a Christian is right. actually being Christ, like doing what Jesus did. You know, in John chapter fifteen, it says, "If you love me, you would obey my commandments. You would pick up your cross and follow me." Right, and you have to deny yourself. So it's that lifestyle. So I think Christianity is more of a today. It's more of a statistic than an, an actual legit life, lifestyle. You see what I mean? So I think in the hard times that I went through, I understood that it's only in the dark moments where you can actually see God's hand move in your life, right? Because it's faith that gets activated. On, only when you step into the unknown, it's faith that only works when you have no control, right? And so it was those moments, those dark moments, where I really saw the hand of God come and lift me up in those times and I knew it wasn't me that was lifting myself up it was always in those dark moments where God just rebounded me up and no other religion could do that where God actually uses uh his power to actually help you in your life that's amazing because it's a it's a good benefit to go through difficult times because just like James he said count it all joy when you go through trials you see what I mean so it's only in those times where you have to really be be joyful because only then you can really see the hand of God. Most people don't understand that it's a benefit to to go through hard times, and that because people who people who go through good times all the time they, they don't have the benefit of of being caught by by the hand of God and, and for you know, to see the the strong arm of God. You see what I mean? So it's a good benefit. It's it's a privilege to be able to experience that but it's only in the darkest moments when you can experience that okay and that's what helped me to get back up again right all the time so the current state of the world today like um i mean we 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 went through uh, there's a there's a word that i can't say but you remember in 2020 when there was a sickness Mm -hmm. can't say what the word is there was a sickness (laughs) yeah and the whole country shut down. It was a global, global thing. It was a global pandemic, I guess we even say. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm allowed to say that. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I, I, I might have to just blur that part. I don't know. But we'll see. But when that was going on, you know, it, there was a lot of people who had a lot of fear. And then I, I think that time really showed, like, who people really were. You kind of knew who your real friends were or you really knew what people actually believed in because they would post about things online. They were like posting like, you know, everybody's in their home so all they're going to, everybody has opinions, everyone's opinionated so they got to post, uh, I don't like this president or I don't like this person or right. whatever, whatever or I'm scared or people are fighting about a mask this, that and the other and and then, you know, whatever else is going on in the world today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ukraine and, um, there's a lot of fear, you know, you see, you see riots happening, uh, a lot of angry people, right. deception on the news, all these different things. Well, it's distractions. That's what it is. Because that happened for a reason, but it's a distraction. So, you see, that was the darkest moment for the world, but you have to understand that that it's it was called 2020 for a reason, 2020 vision, that God was trying to show people <laughs> that, like like I said before... To see the the hand of God move in whatever is happening, yeah. you see what I mean? Because there's a lot of people that had who were quarantined 
that we're able to spend quality time with Jesus again to eliminate any distraction, internet pollution. Uh, well, the internet went up because obviously everyone was on their phone. But there was a lot of people that disciplined themselves to say, you know, I'm quarantined, so I'm going to be alone with God at this time. So it, right. it was a year of vision, I think so, more than it was tragic because God was actually showing people a different perspective of what God's trying to do in his li- in people's lives. I see what you're saying. At first, I thought I thought you were being sarcastic. Or were, or were you being sarcastic when you said 2020 vision? No, it's true. Oh, you're being serious? Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. At first, I was like, wait, is he just being sarcastic again? <laughs> Well, no, no, I get it. That's that's a cool that's a cool analogy. All right. Um, but yeah, no, that is for real though. Like, you know, it really sh- exposed when, especially when, not to sound cliche, it's just true. Right. Like, like whenever a crisis happens, like it does shine a light on what's really going right. on in the heart and the mind of human beings. Exactly. But, like, if you think about it, it's only in the dark moments, like I said about five times, like, God uses his hand. Like, look at Moses. After Moses left Egypt with, with the Israelites, God purposely guided them towards a dead end on purpose. Yeah, so there are multiple stories recorded in Scripture in which God purposely brings people into a dead end for a purpose. You know, a dead end, a dark moment for a reason. So that God can highlight his powerful, strong arm to save them. You see what I mean? Because God brought Moses and the Israelites out of Egypt into a dead end on purpose so that the Red Sea can be split and so that they can be able to cross through the what is called the impossible over the over the river into the promised land, you see? And it's also it's it's multiple times. It, it's all over scripture. I can I, I can say it so many times, but but that's just how it is. God is a God that steps into the unknown even even Joshua when Joshua was stepping into the unknown, God told Joshua that this is a place that you never entered before. You see, you see what I mean? So God is a God of the unknown. He always brings people into the unknown so that way our faith can be activated. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right. I see exactly what I mean. I agree. Um, so I got a question on that because you brought up Moses and uh, Israel being in the wilderness, getting out of Egypt. You remember... I had a question. You remember when they came out of Egypt and they were in the wilderness? And, right. it's, and it's recorded that the people, some of the people were upset because, yeah, they were free. They were no longer in slavery. But they're walking around in the desert now. Right. <laughs> they're walking around in the desert. And some of them were like, you know, it was kind of nice over there in Egypt and slavery. At least we're guaranteed a meal every single day. You know, mm-hmm. they, you know, they're thinking about going back. And now, this is something that I am trying to get Christians to understand. I feel like, I almost feel like I'm like the Moses for Christians. All right. For like a slavery mindset. I'm trying to like... Well, well, the problem with what happened with the Israelites is the Israelites were taken out of Egypt, but Egypt was not taken out of them, you see? So they had everything in them. They were still complaining. They were still arguing. They were still worshiping bulls when Moses was, was on the mountain. So that's still relatable even today. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and I've heard, I don't know if you've ever heard this. This is like a modern day kind of like an Exodus story where right. you have a lot of entrepreneurs on YouTube who, you know, they used to live in the ghetto. They used to live in the hood. Right. Know, and then they come out of the hood. The hood, hood, yeah. You know, but, but so I've heard... Is his name Damon John? I heard Damon John say a lot of people, and he was—I think he was talking about black men specifically. But he was like a lot of a lot of people, they come out of the hood, but the hood never leaves them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah. And like, there's there's a mentality that people have that they're struggling with, and 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 I, this is why I keep saying on my channel. Today, most Christians are modern day Pharisees. Right. It's like they're 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 enslaved by the laws of the Bible. They're they're enslaved by the the written code. They don't understand the spirit of it. They 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 they're, they go by um, word for word something like. And I, and I always use the example of joy. Like the Bible says to have joy. Right. And then a Christian, if a Christian doesn't have joy, 
all of a sudden they feel like they're in sin because they don't have joy. I'm like, dude, that's such an enslaving philosophy. Mm. Yeah, do you agree with that? Do you see yeah, no, that? Yeah, no, I agree because the headquarters of the soul is the mind, right? And even Paul, writing one third of the, you know, of the New Testament, he also wrote the most words in the New Testament too. That matters too. Words matter, you know. And so what happens is, <laughs> yes, dude, someone agrees with me. Someone agrees. <laughs> Now, now, the thing is, Paul, a lot of the things that he wrote about, and especially in Romans chapter 8, was, and also Philippians, and also Ephesians, Galatians, everything, is uh, the mind. It's very important because the mind is, is, is the devil's playground, if you don't, if, you know, the, the devil's workshop, if, you don't, if you're not careful. But also, if you think about it, Jesus, he died on a hill that's called the what? The place of the school, right? Gol- Golgotha. It's called the place of the school. Right. I and remember so, that. Yeah. And so, and so Jesus died on top of that skull, which is the mind. If you think about it, because God wants to take our mind. He wants to control our mind. When you renew by, by repentance, renewing your mind. You see what I mean? How that works? So. <sighs> look, look, guys, if I ever pass away, if I die, and there's no other voice on planet Earth to set people free, listen to John Matei. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to John. <laughs> Read Brave for Freedom. It's about freedom. Right. It's yeah, exactly. Man. It, it, it's funny, man. I'm geeking out cuz like <laughs> gosh, man. It's 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 like I, every time I have a conversation with a Christian and I'm not I'm not hating on Christians. I don't hate I don't hate anybody on planet Earth no matter how wicked you are, no matter how legalistic you are. But on one of my videos, I try to say that Christians, most Christians, unconsciously try to justify a slavery mentality. Mm -hmm. Like, they'll read the Bible, and it's like they're looking for verses to back up why we should freaking, like, be legalistic and and, and, and to suffer as a Christian. They're not looking for... I, I just had a conversation with someone when you and I went to church today. On the way back mm-hmm. from this church, one of my friends called me. And he was telling me that he just went to some church and he was telling me how it went. And he, and he was, I guess a bunch of people were there were having a debate about something. And then he, he was in on the debate, but he, I forget what was said, but basically he was saying that these people were getting hyped up debating about things that are enslaving right like makes sense like you ever heard of a calvinist i'm not sure if i heard of that i learned the word calvinist from my friend dante and i and i say his name because i'm gonna have him interviewed on this uh, podcast as well but he was telling me about these like calvinist people and I don't know too much about Calvinism. I just know that they believe in like predestination, like God chooses who's going to go to heaven or hell before, like I, I could I could be going to hell right now, no matter how much I try to serve Christ. Because, and I don't don't, don't get me wrong, I, maybe I got it wrong, but just from what he's shared with me, God will choose who's going to heaven, and who goes to hell. It's already predestined. No matter what you do, it's already right. predetermined. No, it's true. It is true. But I also believe just like how parents they choose. To... I want to know about this. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was talking to my cousin Darius. Okay. Uh, he, he, the younger Darius over the phone. And Darius, I'm sure he's watching too. So, <laughs> so he, he said, uh, he, and he, he's really smart. He's very informative. He said um, that parents choose to have kids, right? But they know, and like I said before, they count the cost uh, you know, beforehand that they're going to misbehave. And they know that. They know that they're going to misbehave. They know that they're eventually going to go into that teenager stage, right? The rebellion teenager stage. Everyone knows that. Right. And they're going to run away from the house. You see what I mean? But we still yeah. choose to have kids, even though we know that. And right. it's, it's the same thing with God. So God knows that we live in a fallen world, right? He knows that we're going to go into that teenage stage and then leave the house and, like, you know, go into the world and go into the laws, you know, uh, gambling and all these things, drugs, alcohol, sex. God knows that. Right. But he... But he creates us anyways you see what i mean i see what you're saying so okay now forget about the word calvinism from a cloud 
I don't know everything that they believe, but this I, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard of this idea of predestination that you said that that you believe, right? I mean, but yeah, I, I I believe yeah. Yeah, I don't know exactly how that works. Like for example, I, okay, okay, someone like me when I hear. I know that the Bible talks about predestination. Like, you're mm-hmm. predestined to be conformed in the image of his son. Like, like that's what we, that's what God wants for us. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, this is turning into a philosophical conversation. What does it mean? Like, do you believe that there are people who God has determined who's going to go to heaven or hell? Well, I believe that you are, for example, watching... A Super Bowl on TV that's recorded, right? So the players, the football players on the field, they had their choice, right? But th- but now, stepping outside of the field, stepping outside of the arena, you're sitting at home, watching the recording that was, you know, beforehand their intention, their decisions to kick the ball, their their decisions to tackle when they shouldn't have tackled, or so on and so forth. So it's the same thing with uh, our decisions in life, you know. We make our decisions, but then, but then once we die and go to heaven, we are going to watch a movie about our life, and then God's going to say, "Wait, you did, you know, you did this, did this, and and then therefore God says, uh, depart from me, for I never knew you." But it, it's the same way. So you're watching a recording of what it really was, your decision, because ultimately we, we have a, a free will, right? And so that never leaves. So that's what I believe. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. No, then. I think that's that's different than what I'm referring to because unless it's not, but but I guess there are people out there who believe that no matter what you do in life, no matter what you do in life, like let's say for example, um, today I don't believe in Jesus, and then but one day it's it's predetermined that I I am going to. Like, it's like, uh, I don't actually have a choice. Like, I'm going to believe at some point because God has determined I'm going to go to heaven and then these people are going to go to hell. And no matter what happens, that's that's just their fate. Like, for you... Oh, no. That's why I don't believe. That's why I don't believe. Because, um, because we all have our own decisions, like I said, right? And so it's not... It, it, it wouldn't make sense because then because then everyone is devalued and, and and that one person wouldn't even matter but that's not true i believe that we actually have a choice you see what i mean and and just like in the bible it says that he who hardens his heart with much reproof shall be cut off without remedy so i believe that the holy spirit is always knocking into that person's heart non-stop throughout the years until they die you see so the holy spirit gave him a chance but the thing is they hardened their heart that's the problem so it's not the whole predestination thing that I was talking about, whether, oh, okay, this, this man's fate is to go to hell. That's not true. The problem is they lived in a lifestyle or a, ch- or a family or childhood or culture or, or neighborhood that, that was negative. And because of that, maybe that caused them to harden their heart. But it's also the music that you can be listening to, the people that you get with that can be hardening your heart. So the issue really is whether they're hardening their heart or not. You see what I mean? Because the Holy Spirit is always knocking. But if they don't answer it, then it's because their heart was hardened. You see what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I yeah. So I, 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 think that's the, I think that's the answer. Yeah, like, um, yeah, it's, it's, it just blows my mind. Because, like, uh, yeah, you know, there's people out there who are looking for Bible verses, actively looking for Bible verses to justify reasons why you. it's determined whether or not you're going to go to heaven or hell or not, no right. matter what you do. Right. But, um, I don't know, I just find it very interesting. All right. So, all right, that's that's very philosophical. It might be a little bit too religious for people. You know? <laughs> well, but, they can easily turn off the channel. <laughs> yeah. It's their free will anyway, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sarcasm. <laughs> you got free will. So, right. um. And also, with your free will, please subscribe to his channel. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's already been predestined yeah. that you will subscribe. So hit the subscribe button now. Right. So, uh, <laughs> um, so, so you, um, what do you think about like gifting talent? Because, for example, there are a lot of Christians out there 
who believe that it's a sin if you exercise your gifts, your God-given gifts, and your or your oh, oh like if you realize that you're good at something, obviously there's pride. You know, mm-hmm. you you can have pride. You can have an ego. <laughs> but this is good. This is good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> I'm about to ask a good one. There are people out there who genuinely think that, for example, you wrote a book. You right. wrote a book. You're an artist. You make uh, pretty decent money. You know, like, mm-hmm. I think I'm so but, so I'm painting for. But, like, but don't go too far, or else the IRS is gonna. Oh kill yeah, me. yeah. I don't want to want to bring that. <laughs> I don't want to talk about your financial situation too much because you know, the IRS to come. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. You know, we're in the mafia. You know, we got... No, I'm kidding. So, <laughs> man, we ain't no op mafia. If I yeah. say that, mafia's going to come for me. But there are Christians who think that it's a it's a sin to, you know, use your gifts, start a business, be, be rich, be a multimillionaire. And obviously, there are ways that are wrong that you can use your gifts in the wrong way. Like, you have this God-given gift, but you use it for the wrong reasons. Right. But most of the time, like for me, I'm an illusionist. Okay. Immediately when I had to go go perform illusions, people are like, "All right, you're a witch. All right, if you don't think I'm a witch, then you think why why are you why are you passionate about performing magic?" I'm like, "It's not that I'm passionate about it. It's just, I like I enjoy it, but it's not like I'm like I don't, I don't know. People are weird. So and then or or let's say for example, I'm doing this podcast. I have I have Christian people, right? That are I'm not saying no names, but people who are questioning me. Because you're like, why are you ambitious about starting, you know, doing a podcast and, you know, trying to become somebody? And I'm like, look, I can show you in your Bible so many reasons why God, he's given us the hands to work. But I want to know your thoughts on it because you are a Christian. I'll tell them to their face right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you put the camera towards me, I'll tell, tell them. Tell them to their face. <laughs> right, but it's not, it's not just laziness, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's it's not just laziness, but are you are you telling me that worshiping idols is is okay if that's what you're trying to tell me? Because in First Samuel chapter chapter fifteen verse twenty three it says stubbornness. Remember stubbornness, not using your gifts, not doing the talent that God gave you. Stubbornness is just as bad as worshiping idols. That's what it says. So that's what you're doing. If you're not using the gifts that God gave you, writing a book, drawing, whatever it is, even if it doesn't seem like you're building the kingdom of God. You are because you're operating in this temple that God gave you. Everything, the this, this skills that you're using is being done within the body, within this temple. So if you're not, if you're not making, if you're not operating in your gifts, talents, whatever it is, then, then you are guilty, just as guilty as worshiping idols. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah. I've never heard of that before in my life. Yeah. First Samuel chapter fifteen, verse twenty three. So those lazy people out there just turn Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so, so 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, go how'd the verse go again? You said that how'd so, that go again? So this happened when Saul was not patient, right? Saul was not patient, he did the sacrifice, and then Samuel came to Saul and said, Hey, you you, you shouldn't have done this, you know, this sacrifice and uh and then the spirit of God was withdrawn from Saul. You remember that? Yeah, um, oh yeah. Wait. It was when I'm back and forth all over the place. It was when Samuel told Saul that obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. Yeah. And then after that, after that, two verses down, it says that literally two verses down, it says stubbornness is just as bad as worshiping idols. So people who are not operating in their gifts, people who are saying, "Oh, but." Yeah, but if I accidentally make too much money, or if I accidentally do this, or what if people judge me, or what if people think that I'm prideful because I'm 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 getting up there, you know, stuff like that. No, that's their decision. Your job is to, is to be obedient. You see, you, you see what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, if you're stubborn and you're not doing what God has called you to do, then you're just as guilty as worshiping idols. You see what I mean? But it's your it's your decision. It's your decision. So that is mind blowing. Right. What do you think of, uh, all right, so I'm about to, I'm about to throw something in here. I don't know what you think. I, I'm not sure what you think about this, but this is just something that I've studied and I, I believe, but I want to know what you think. I don't know what you think. So what do you think about when God said, 
let man have dominion over the earth, you know, over the fish of the seas, birds of the air, and let them rule the whole planet, basically. Do you think that heaven is the end goal? Uh, I... Oh, that heaven is the end goal? Yeah. Like, you mean that we're preparing the kingdom of God here on earth to actually fulfill God's kingdom? For example, that's interesting how you worded that. Um, do you think we're going to be in heaven for eternity? Um, I think so, but some, uh, I think in the scripture I have to read it again, but the Bible says that there's going to be a new Jerusalem, a new earth. You, you see what I mean? So, so, I don't know. Just like how we trade in a car for a new car, right? So... What if God trades in this earth for a new earth? So I don't know if we're gonna be in heaven. Maybe I, I don't know. I, I didn't I didn't die yet. Who knows? But <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's gonna be interesting. But um, I mean, now that you told me, I'm gonna go home and do some studying. So <laughs> we'll look it up. Right. Uh, this is important to look at. And I think it's important to look at. now. Okay, look, <clears throat> look. I'm not the kind of guy who debates with people, and you know, I know I don't think you are either. So I'm happy that we can have this conversation because I guarantee if there was someone else sitting here, they'd be, <laughs> just the fact that I asked the question, you're going to get mad. <laughs> but, um, yeah. all right, so I have something to think about. And it's something you just think about, ponder it. God's, we all know, and you probably heard some preachers say, God's word will not return void. Right. When he says something, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, I use the example of a king. You remember Herod in the Bible? Yeah. Now, I use the, this example because it's an example of a king, but also from the Bible, because a lot of people ain't going to believe an example unless I use the Bible. So here's an example of a king in the Bible who he, there was a, he was at a party. <clears throat> right. And there was a girl dancing. I don't know if you remember this story. I think I do. And... He was pleased by this girl's dance. And he said, look, I'll give you whatever you want, basically. You know, what do you want? She says, I want the head of John the Baptist. I, right. guess, I guess her mom pressured her to say, you know, I want to get, get John the Baptist killed. Ask for his head and put it on a platter. Right. And uh, she was like, okay. That, she, she said that to Herod. Herod realized, he's like, oh, snap. You know, he had all these people around. He can't take his word back. And the re and, and 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 I tell people this because he was a king, and we don't understand the concept of kings. In America, because we live in a democracy, mm -hmm. and so. In a kingdom, a king can't take back his word. I'm not talking about God right now. Right. I'm talking about in just a kingdom in general, mm -hmm. where a physical human being is ruling. You can't take your words back because your words are law. Right. And so now when we go into the word of God, the word of God is his laws. Right. right. Whatever he says is a law. That's why you have to obey God whatever he says because he's a king. Right. And so Herod, you know, he couldn't take back his words because he is a king. So he had to have John the Baptist's head cut off. Mm -hmm. um, and he couldn't get away with it because there's other people around sitting there witnessing so I say this because it's a good example of how, how God is, is where when he says his word will not return void, like whatever he said is going to happen. And so I bring this up because in the beginning of time, I tell people, look, all you really need is chapter, uh, Genesis chapter one and two to actually understand the whole Bible. You know, someone will take what I'm saying out of context and say, well, no, you need the rest of the Bible too. You need the rest of the Bible. And I'm like, yeah, no, I know, man. Just don't take my words out of context. I know we need the whole Bible. Right. I'm just saying in general, just right now, hear what I'm saying. Genesis chapter 1 and 2, God creates the world, and then he tells mankind what their purpose is. They have dominion over the earth. Just don't eat from that tree. That's it. Right. And so my question to you is, if God's word will not return void, do, do you think that possibly, ultimately, the destination is not heaven, but we will have dominion over the earth again. I'm not. I know I'm all over the place when I'm I. I'm not said too that. sure about that. I, I don't really know. Okay. You know, I saw. I I wouldn't agree at this point, but. 
Right. Because because for me, I believe having dominion over the earth, meaning we have dominion over the lions, the birds. You know how people go fishing. So, you know the the lions don't 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 have like a a, a food system or against us. You know we control them, and the fish don't fish after us. We fish after them. The fish. You see what I mean? So I think by dominion that we have the authority um, to. To, to, to take control over the animals so that we can have food and things like that. It's a blessing that God gave us. You see what I mean? So I think that's how I see it. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, I think, I, okay, I, this, this is what I'm trying to say, is God created mankind for the earth. Right. And then, so, I don't, even though we sin has entered the world and there's evil and all those different things and then there's going to be a antichrist and you know you see all these things that are going to happen in the bible but I, but i think ultimately could it be possible ultimately that his will never change cuz cuz a lot of people are saying it, uh, this is what this is the first thing that you learn when you go to church the first thing that you learn is that you know jesus christ died on the cross for your sins so that when you die you'll go to heaven and I'm not saying that that's not true. Mm -hmm. I'm just arguing the point, but are we going to be in heaven forever? Or are we going to come back to earth and it's going to be heaven on earth again, back to Eden, back to the original plan that God right. had? Now, I know you say you're not, you're not sure, but... Right. I it makes sense. I understand. Uh, because, you know, in the, you know uh, it is confusing to believe that too. I'm not sure. Right. Because the Bible says that God is preparing a place for us. You know, uh, He's preparing... A location for us in heaven that we can be with the Lord forever so I'm not sure you know because I, I don't know but all I know is that God's kingdom is coming down God is gonna bring his kingdom down to earth to where we will be glorified that is a you good see what point. I mean so 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 God has a kingdom that's going to be released to earth because this kingdom that we have here this earth is is decaying but God's going to like like I said how people are trading the car for their old car for a new car it's the same thing God, that God is trading in this world for a new world to come, and and that everything is going to be the way it was. Everything is going to be justified, and and God's going to wipe away wipe away every tear from uh, their eyes. Everything is going to be justified, and uh, it's going to be done, judged. You see. Yeah, man, this is so interesting, man. And and, and by justified, I mean God's going yeah. to bring everything into justice. Whatever bad happened, whatever, when people, if someone got, things like that, or anything. And God's going to bring all that into justice to where, to where people will deserve, will get what they deserve. Yeah. Hold on, let me pause this real quick. So that is very, very interesting, man. Right. Um, now, yeah, no, we can, we can go on forever talking about what the Bible says about this, what the Bible says about that. The reason I bring these points up is because... These are it, 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 freeing ideas because we're, we're taught that life is all about trying to escape earth and get to heaven. But Christ was like, you know, when he left the earth, he said, he prayed and he said, Father, keep them here. Right. <laughs> you know, and he said, occupy until I come. And he, um, it, there's a lot of stuff, but I know that that can get into philosophy. And so um, I like this stuff that you're talking about with this freedom because right. like what you said the purpose of writing this book was to make people realize that the freedom that they have right what can you can you name something specifically like okay if we live in a free country why are there still what, what's the problem why, why are we still having issues if we live in a free country in your perspective well I believe it's because people just take advantage of freedom, honestly. You know, in, in, in America... In what ways? In, in America, we don't have to be brave for freedom anymore. I, I know America is the home of the brave, but it's not really a thing anymore. It's being diluted, you see? And now there's a lot of crimes. A lot of people are, are being born into America instead of fighting for freedom to come to America, you see? So, so now, because people are being born in America, they don't know what, what their fathers fought to get that freedom all they know is that we're just born in america that's it but there's so many people who are 
immigrants and the refugees like like my dad he fought to come to america he he nearly lost his life he had a ak-47 driven down his mouth and he almost died you see and so uh he he fought to come here and that's why my dad is so passionate because he him and also my uncles and all these people who fought to come here, they have that that bright fire inside of them that is dry, driving themselves to be, be passionate for this freedom that we have. Right. That is amazing. Um, man, I, you, you almost made me want to go ask questions about your father's life and all that stuff, but again, <laughs> it's in your book. Uh, so, all right, you writing a book, Right. You know, I know that you say you want to you want to help other people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, find their gifts and, you know, do whatever. So so what would you say? What was the process of you starting to write a book? Because this is your third book. Mm -hmm. And then I remember our story when, you know, I wrote a book, whatever, whatever. But right. t tell me the process of writing a book and putting your voice out there. OK, so the first thing before I say anything, is it all started with a breakup, okay? <laughs> That's what happened. So, you know, I won't go too into, into, into detail with this girl, but yeah, so I was dating a girl, and then we broke up, and then the following day, immediately, the next day, I had to work a 16-hour shift at this hotel, this resort in Tucson, right? And I was just, I was the bellhop um, for this hotel, you know, standing outside, taking people's keys and parking the cars, but for some reason, I had to work a 16-hour day, but no one was showing up. It was a very slow day. The first four hours, it was very slow. It was a cold morning, chilly. No one was coming, and no customers, nothing. But I, I believe God did that for a reason, so that I can be able to think about uh, this idea. So I came up with this idea of why do bad things happen, you know, but God uses, but God uses them for good. So people come into your pack, people come into your life for a reason to deliver this package. And then with this package, you learn wisdom, you learn these things. And so that's why this, you know, my authorship career came about is from a breakup. But second thing, this, this thing that drives me to complete long-term projects is I use clever visual metaphor so that I can personify the concept abstract of thought, you see, and to, and to make it simple, yeah. What do you mean by that? So, what what that means is I'm using my imagination to to bring about reality. You see, so I well I don't know if most people do this, but I, in my mind I, I pretend I'm a CEO, you know, of a, <laughs> of a company, and and I'm like, all right, guys, I need the workers here, I need the team, I need people to come here, the research team, the the history team, I need the writing team, I need all these guys to help me write this book. <laughs> So you're thinking like you are a big boss, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> and then I just pretend that I have people writing for me and I'm like traveling the world, going into different right. you know, business meetings. All right, let's get this book down. <laughs> Things like that. You're, you're putting yourself in the frame of mindset for that type of life. Yeah, exactly. I you. Right, but, but the other thing is a formula that helped me. So anything that... So if you want to accomplish long-term goals, the thing is you have to... Anything is you have to think big, but do small, consistently. You see what I mean? <laughs> so, I see what you're saying. Right, yeah, so you, you have to think big, do small, consistently. And what do I mean by that? Well, this, this book is 200 pages, right? Yeah, it's, it's 200 pages, but my mind registers it as just one page at a time, you see? You see what I mean? That makes right, sense. And I got you. it took me 730 days to get this book done. But my brain registers it as being done just one day at a time, you see? Yeah, I see what <laughs> right. you're saying. Exactly, I have it all here. But it, it took 757 hours to write this book, but my brain registers it as being done one hour at a time. <laughs> and th this book has seven. This book has 65,000 words, but my brain registers it as being done just one word at a time. <laughs> That's interesting. You see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I know right, what you mean. so, yeah, so, but it also, it also, so if you want to accomplish things, like I said, ambition, but you you, ha you need to be curious, you need to be coachable, multiple, and you have to be ambitious. And ambitious is the whole is the whole thing that I told you, like I'm using the clever visual metaphor so that I can p personify the concept abstract of thought. That's ambition. Like I'm using my, my mind to make up fake stuff so that I can get this 
thing into Barnes and Noble. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, yeah. You see what I mean? That's what I'm but that's about. how it is. But but the thing is, people. Uh, but the thing is, I just want to encourage people to, if, but you know, if they want to accomplish anything that's long term, whether it's even in relationships, college, anything like that, whether it's even being a Christian in your daily daily walk with God, anything. It's all. It's all. It. it you have to break it down. You have to separate everything because the only way you can finish long term, if, if you want to get into the finish line, you have to be able to get there one step at a time. You have to get there into small pieces. You see what I mean? And and excuses can't get in the way. Like, oh yeah, but I can't really, you know, write a book or I can't be a pastor or I can't go to college or I can't I can't draw or I can't do this because X, Y, and Z. I don't have time or, or anything like that. But you have to realize that you were born looking like your parents, but you will die looking like your decisions. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, so you have to be able to, no matter what, it doesn't matter where you're born, it matters how you finish. You see what I mean? So, so I believe this book is really going to inspire people, but the fact that I'm releasing this formula that people can abide on to think big but do small, so that way people can actually be able to do long-term right. goals. Working in increments. Yeah, right? exactly, you got increments. A, you got a big vision... But you know you can't just make it happen overnight. Right. You got to do it in small exactly. little steps. And there's a saying. There's a saying that says you have to eat the elephant one bite at a time. <laughs> one bite at a time. You can't eat the whole elephant in whole. You have to eat it one bite at a time. All right. And that applies to reading a book or writing a book. It doesn't matter where you whether you're reading it or not. You can read a book page by page. You're eating the elephant one bite at a time. You see what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. A, a, a house is not built by just one piece alone. It's built by multiple pieces. You see yeah. what I mean? So you have to do one step at a time. Like, I, I woke up, you know, when I was writing this book, um, I was simplifying everything. Just like in math, how you have to simplify, right? So I simplify. So let's say I'm working at, you know, my delivering job, and I plan my day when I get home. So I, I'm planning my mind, what am I going to do when I get home? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say... Okay, I'm, I'm, when I get home, I'm going to write just one page. And then I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to say what I'm writing about. I'm not going to say what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say I'm going to write one page. And that's it. And the reason why you're doing that is because you're trying to trick your mind into thinking that what you're doing is simple, even though it's not. Okay, so then I get home into my computer, and my mind already knows that I'm doing one page. Now I'm, now I'm going to add on to it. Okay, now I'm going to write this onto that one page. You see what I mean? You have to simplify everything to where now it's like, okay, I'm just going to get home and write a page. Easy. That's it. You know, don't don't overcomplicate it. You know? Amazing. If you're overcomplicated, then, then you're going to have a hard time looking at the finish line. Because you, you have to have the end in mind. That's another thing to be successful. And 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 success is, is uh, it, to get to the finish line, you have to be able to eliminate distractions but you have to also you have to also um, bring your the values and goals those two have to be aligned so to be successful you have to be able to eliminate distractions and align your goals and values you see what I mean and and and, and in order to do that you have to be able to not overcomplicate but you have to simplify everything break everything into sections you see what I mean yeah but that's the only way you can get long-term goals accomplished. It's by doing those things. So. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Man, what the... You, this is your first podcast interview? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. But, hey, this is so much different. Like, like, like... Okay, well... I, am I allowed to tell that story about, like, when the first time you wrote your first book? Oh, yeah, yeah. You can do it. Okay, okay. Because, <laughs> no, I was going to say, like, yeah, that you're so much... You you've been working so hard that you're so right. much different from when I when you when you wrote your first book because when you right. wrote I okay let me tell a story I wrote a book in 2019 I think I started promoting it stuff like in 2020 something like that right and um you know it's not my favorite book but you got to start like right like, you know your first book is kind of like oh you know you're getting your foot wet right? I get my foot wet right but like you're not working from experience. D don't think that people are saying, "Oh, but yeah, but you, you you're not good enough to be an author yet. You're you're not good enough to be a pastor yet." Because remember, it's not your qualifications that enable you; it's your obedience that enables you. 
You see Amen what I mean? To that, yeah. Yeah. I, I so agree. the fact that you're obedient, that's what enables you to do big things. It's not, yeah, but I don't have the qualifications. I don't have all these things. You have to, you have to work toward experience, not from experience. You see? Yeah, but you can go on. That yeah, that that's amazing. Um, it's funny because like when 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 I wrote that book, a lot mm -hmm. of people started. Uh, messaging me and contacting me like, hey man, you wrote a book, you wrote a book. And, you know, I didn't know why people were calling me necessarily. I'm like... Was it because they, they thought you weren't ready or were they surprised? Well, I think people were surprised that I wrote a book and then... Because I've always been promoting and doing... Trying to sell something. I got into Network Marketing Legal Shield. I got into personal training and I was promoting online. I'm always like trying to sell something online. Mm -hmm. And then... You know, so I write a book, and that's something that I actually enjoy doing. Yeah, it's nice. And, you know, when people see that you got a little bit of success or you're doing something, or, you know, all of a sudden your friend, old friends start coming around or, you know, old, old time. And then you don't know who to trust because it's like, why are you contacting me? You know? Right. Like, I got a real estate license, and all of a sudden all these people start contacting me. Girls that I used to go to school with contact me. Right. Or exes and different, just different people. So you're like, why are people hitting me up? You know? And then... I remember you and I start talking again, but I didn't doubt you. <laughs> like, like you're the, probably the only person that I'm not like, like, uh, didn't doubt your intentions on why you're hitting me back up. Cause right. you know, you and I, we would talk every now and then. Yeah. Right. We're on and off. We're, we're working on the click, the clickbait. Remember, remember that? 2014? Click, clickbait? The clickbait that we were doing online. Wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not clickbait. It's called, uh, click, um. Uh, I, I thought it was click, click, not clickbait. It's click, uh, clickbait is like, um, when you have a, a bad thumbnail on a video. Click, something oh, click. I see, well, I thought it we're was. trying to sell products online, weren't we? I thought it was. No, well, I mean, like, you remember that you, we, you and I were trying to yeah, get on that website. We we're trying to. What the heck? <laughs> I don't even remember that. I didn't remember. Yeah, I, it was in 2013, 2014. A long time ago. Bro. But the way the website operates, is in the clickbait function. Oh yeah, well it's... yeah, it, it wasn't the name of the company. It was just the 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 functionality that we're doing in in that company. Man, I I know what the company is. I I just it's it's click something, but the website is called click something. But anyways, they have a bunch of products on there and, and affiliate links and you know you try mm -hmm. to promote other people's products. Yeah, I remember getting into that, but. Thanks. Yeah. So back then, I was I was learning about business. Right. I was learning like because I was like, man, I'm gonna be a businessman. I'm gonna get rich. I was I didn't tell anybody this because I was going to church. I was you know, and I know I know Christians think like you know it's a sin to get rich. It's it's a, it's a sin to so I, I wouldn't tell anybody that's what I was doing because I'm like I know it's not a sin. Right. I'm going for it though. Mm -hmm. And but anyways, but when I when I wrote my book, you, you know, you hit me up. Right. I did. We, we talk, <laughs> and like. You come over to the apartment with chit chat. I was discouraged too. Yeah, I remember that you were discouraged, and um, but you you were telling me that you were writing a book, and you're like, yeah, you know, it might take me like, like ten years. Ten years to to finish. <laughs> I told this book. myself that it's gonna take me ten years. Oh, give me twenty years, you know, give me. You, I remember you even said that maybe the time by you're in your sixties and you're gonna retire, maybe you'll right. finish your first well, book. Well, because like I said, you know. I had this mentality, and and I don't know if it, I don't know if it was because how I was raised, but it was because you know I had this mentality that I had that I had to work um, from experience, and and I felt like I was enabled by my qualifications, not by my obedience. You see what I mean? Mm, yeah. Right. So, because I remember when we were talking, and it, hold on, wait. You remember what I said? Yeah. What did I say to you? It was a. Uh, I think I forgot. About you, when you when you said, "Oh, it's gonna take me this long to write," yeah, what in, I said into the apartment. Yeah, so yeah, I said it was gonna be. Oh, you said that it was gonna take me a week. I think. Yeah, I was like, I was like, John, <laughs> I was like, you know, you if you really want to, you could finish a book in like two weeks. Right, dude, you finished it in like a week. <laughs> I, wait, did I really finish it in a week? Dude, yeah, you because you hit me up by like I I said two weeks. And then I said, if you just laser focus, dude, you got, you get off work or whatever you're doing. If you just laser focus, forget about anything you're doing. Don't talk to no, nobody on the phone. Don't play no video games. On, don't try to talk to no girls on some dating site. Just get 
on your computer and just type. And then don't think about grammar and, and spelling everything right. Just type the book. Right. And I remember you said, you're like, oh, yeah. And I remember you're all hyped up. You're all hyped up. You're, we're in the apartment. I was encouraged, yeah. Yeah, and then you're like, I, and, and usually if I give people advice, I'm not thinking that they're going to take it. Because right. like some, some of my friends, I, you know, they're like, you got advice for me. What's, give me some wisdom. Man, that was deep, bro. Man, man, man. And then they go off and they do the same thing. I'm like, <laughs> what is going on? You, you came over here for three hours talking about what's my advice. You loved it. You that's the deepest thing anyone said to you. And you don't take the advice. Anyways, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you ran off. You go home. We ain't talked for a week. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I wasn't thinking. It was just blank silence for just a week. Just silence. <laughs> and I, I didn't think anything of it i didn't know if you were gonna take my advice or not i wasn't thinking about it and you hit me up hey man i finished my book <laughs> right and i'm like well what it's because of it's it's because of the formula that i was applying into into my life to finish this project so at that time you, know, you I, came up with I, that big thing i was thing. think i was thinking big you know i had that big dream but i was taking one hour at a time one day at a time one step you know you know, Sylvester Stallone said you have to take one step at a time, one punch at a time, one round at a time, one fight at a time. Well, this w- with with the book that I was writing, the Live Like You Are Predestined, and even any book, this book, I have four books now, piece of cake, you know. Like, uh, what what I did was, I I went small. I went one character at a time. You see, one character at a time, one word at a time, one sentence at a time, one paragraph at a time, one page at a time, one chapter at a time, and then easily one book at a time. You know, it's that kind of mentality that you need. You have to be able to do small, but think big. You have to do small. You know what I mean? It's it's practical. But consistently, too. You, you have to think big, do small consistently. It's those three things in the formula. You have to be curious, because curious is when, when, when you want to know what the unknown holds for you, right? And then coachable is, coachable is your... You are moldable. You, you have to be able to yield to, to any advice or any even anything that might hurt you, but f- for your good. And then you have to be able to be ambitious. Ambitious is when you climb out of the box and, and you work outside of the box. Anybody got any anointing oil? <laughs> <laughs> I officially... No but, no, but it's true. But like, if you don't believe me, then, then look, I'm... Prove this wrong. Can you prove this wrong? No. I'm holding a book because I followed the formula. Right. You know, like, no one can prove this wrong. No one. I love this, man. That, mm. See, this is, <laughs> this is what, this is my vision for the world. Is people doing extraordinary things and doing it freely with a smile on their face, not worried about, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, smile. <laughs> with a smile on your face, not all worried about, oh, what does God think about me? <laughs> like, like f- figure out the pride thing as you're exercising your right. gift. Like, like, like for, for example, like, um, a lot of people, they're, they're trying to become perfect first before they try to do something. Like, no, 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 no. Figure out what you're doing along the right. way. Like I said, uh, People are waiting to be enabled by their qualifications, but you have to be you have to be obedient first. The Bible says, "Be uh, obedience is better than sacrifice." Right? That's what Samuel said. You <laughs> you have to be able to work by obedience first, and then in the end, then you have the qualifications. You know, a lot of people think, "Oh, who, who's this guy? He's younger than I am. Who's this guy writing a book?" You know. Well, I'm obedient. It's not the qualifications; it's the obedience. Look at look at Moses. Look at Jeremiah in the Bible, Jeremiah. So Jeremiah was spoken, so God spoke to Jeremiah. And then God said, okay, I need you to go to this country and speak to this nation. But you know what Jeremiah said? He said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. I'm not allowed to speak. I don't have the qualifications. I don't have the certificates. I don't have the age number, the age. I don't have that. You know, because in their in their culture, remember, culture just means your version of normal. I know the pastor didn't mention that. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, the, 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 no, the, yeah. no, the pastor mentioned culture, but he was overcomplicating it. I, the yeah, the no, word culture, mean. really, it means your version of normal. Period. That's it. Remember, simplify. Like I said, you have to simplify everything. You know? So it, it's it's that thing. So in their culture, it wasn't okay for someone young to speak. But you know what God said? Even God simplified it. You know? He said, no, don't say that you're young. Just, just do what I tell you to say 
And remember, in the Bible it says, unless you are like a child, unless you think like a child, you can't make it to heaven. Even 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 God said you have to th keep things simple if you want to accomplish things in life. But I, no, like, I'm not trying to be like this. Uh, this like uh, this, what's it called? The uh, you know this like crazy hype creature. What I'm saying is that this principle can can help you accomplish anything in life. Your prayer life with, with God. Your your fasting. If you if you don't like fasting. Take it one hour at a time. I, it, it can be applied to anything, not just business, not just secular. It can be applied to spiritual as, as, as much as in the secular. But also but also in uh, the book of Samuel, Samuel was going to Jesse, and then Jesse wanted to find a new king, right? So Jesse aligned all the, the big brothers, you know, buff, um, com competent, smart. They, they, they were tall. And then, and then uh, Samuel was looking at their glory, how how smart they look. But then it wasn't any of them at all. So Samuel told Jesse, is there another son that you have? But then, but then you know what Jesse said? He said, oh, I, I still have the youngest. He, he didn't say young. He said youngest, even worse. <laughs> <laughs> youngest. And it was, he, was, he was 15 years old and he got anointed to be king. Why? Because of his qualifications? No. The qualifications did not enable him. It was David's obedience. It was his heart that enabled him in the in the field, that brought him into a place to work towards qualifications. And then now he was a king. Now all that stuff, you know. I'm getting so That's much out of this, bro. <laughs> Ain't that deep? No, yeah. but so many people, even people that I know, say that you shouldn't be writing a book because you don't have you don't have the the experience. You don't have these things. But you have to reverse it. Again, if if someone says that you're not that you're too young to write a book that's just their version of normal that's their culture a culture is not just a nation or a neighborhood or a family it's a mindset you see a dude i agree a, <laughs> a thousand percent like in 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 god's kingdom there is a culture right. that we are supposed to have in his own kingdom mm -hmm. we have we're supposed to have the mindset of the king and then the, the right. mindset of the king when God created the universe, he wasn't sitting there thinking, um, oh, man, am I qualified to create the world? I'm all by myself. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. it's dark out here. Right. You know, no, let there be light. <laughs> yes, exactly. he's, like, he's like, I'm tired. Of, I'm sick and tired of this situation. It's dark out here. Right. It's cold. Let there be light. Boom, there was light. He, he, he made the light before he made the sun. Shoot. Mm -hmm. But how unqualified do you got to be? <laughs> you you made the light first. No, right. no, 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 I don't even know where I'm going with that. But but no, it's like and this is this is funny. I love this conversation. It's funny because um I try now nah, I, I wonder who's gonna Bible thump me after I say this. Who's gonna throw stones at me? I don't know. But for me, when somebody asks me my thoughts about anything, I try to have the mindset of God. Right. I don't I don't believe in all these other types of mindsets, oh, you know, I, I got, I got like a, a, a rich person mindset or multi-million dollar mindset. Those are cool, 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 whatever. I, 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 I don't care. I try to think like God, and when God does something, he just does it to right. completion. Right. He's not sitting there back and forth. Should I do it or whatever, whatever? But someone's gonna be like, oh, they're gonna try to find some Bible verse. To, again, like I said, to justify as a slavery mentality. No, no. Um, you know, people try to quote different things like about pride or humility. And uh, I, I, I bring up, you know, Christ. He didn't bash on his disciples when they said, hey, who's going to be the greatest in your kingdom? All right. Who's going to be the greatest? Jesus didn't say none of y'all. He said, oh, look, look, he just redirected them and said, look, this is how you become great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to be a servant first. Right? You got to be a servant. Mm -hmm. You know, it, if you want to sit in the high chair, he says, go take the lower chair first. Exactly. And then somebody will tell you, hey, why are you sitting over there? Go sit on the high chair, and then and then all of a sudden you have everybody's attention. Exactly. L literally strategies on how to win in life. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right. But, but people they they they're just so focused on the on the low chair. Like you always got to be. Humble. You always got to be down here lowly. Yes, even when, when God 
allows you to be in a position of power. You still got to be humble in your mind and your spirit. Mm -hmm. But your position, whether you're in a high position in life or whether, like you were talking about, whether you're a kid, it doesn't determine whether or not you're qualified or not. It doesn't determine, it doesn't determine anything. The, the position doesn't determine anything. It's your mindset about it. It's your, it's you know, like you were saying, it's the culture. It's so deep. Right. <laughs> yes. Man. But, um, but anyways, is, was there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Cause it's coming to a close on this one. No, I and, think that's um, it. I just wanted to encourage people that it's possible. You, you see what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's your, it's your decision to step out of how you were born. You know, you have to be able to do what you need to do through the power of the Holy Spirit. And also, I just wanted to say that success, the, the true definition of success is investing into the un, the unseen. It's investing into what lasts forever, the kingdom of God, right? You know, because this body is going to, to die and be, get buried. But this, you know, the soul inside of me, the words that are coming out, the the sound that you hear, that's my soul. That's the invisible me, you know? And But this body is just a manifestation. It's just like the the flesh that's going to die. You see what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, of what really is inside the spirit. And so if if you invest into, in, into the spirit of God, then that's how you really succeed in life. Amazing. All right. All right. Is these your final thoughts? I think that's You got any, uh, any other encouraging words? I think that's just about it. Oh, yeah. But... Promote your book one more time. Yeah, this is Brave for Freedom. It's not released yet, but I'm going to do a promotional thing online on, on Instagram in about a month or so, so you can be able to pre-order. So the website is called braveforfreedom.com. And I'll put all his uh, information in the description below. Yeah, so this is how it looks like right here, Brave for Freedom. So you, you can, can pre-order. It's going to be available soon. It's published, so it's really nice. Awesome. That's my dad. And, um, yeah, man, I appreciate you coming Thanks. on. Thank you for uh, having me. You, you're the first person... Yeah, I think you're the first person to be on this podcast. I do yeah. so many videos. I don't even know. I mean, to to watch your videos online is one thing, but to be here is a whole different experience. I'm excited. Awesome, and I, I, I love the whole setup you have here. It's yeah, man, inspiring. Um, so yeah, yeah. So welcome. I mean, not welcome. Thank you for being on the pre the the, the Creed podcast. I can't see see. This was so deep. I can't even talk. <laughs> okay, welcome. Or hashtag, or I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Subscribe to the Creed, do all those YouTube things. And uh, yeah, buy the book and watch. And if, if you could put the link in the bottom, I don't know if you can allow Yeah, we'll throw the link in there. Um, yeah, I think that's how you end a podcast, right? I think that's how you end it. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Peace out, everybody. Right, bye. <laughs>